Welcome crafters! Ronnie Bringle here for our Country Friends and today I'd like to show you a little bit about needle felting. Needle felting is a really fun uh, hobby to have. It's easy. It's the, one of the least expensive hobbies and you can do wonderful little things anywhere from this flat type of uh, felting where you can create beautiful handbags or pillows or pictures uh, with the needle felted technique. You can do simple little things like this little pumpkin pin that you could wear at the in the fall, a uh, cute little snowman pin that you might wear in the winter time. Here's some nice fun little flower pins. Maybe you could make a a little barrette for a little girl or a pin. Fun little pin cushion. We'll get a little more advanced with some teddy bears. I've done sheep, I've done bunnies, various different kinds of animals. And they're all done with just uh, two, three, actually three simple little tools. The first thing you'll need, of course, is some needle felting needles. These needles are made to go into needle felting machines, industrial type machines, or now you can get home machines that do needle felting. They'll do the flat kind of felting. Uh, these are available online and uh, you just would search for needle felting and you'll find all kinds of different supplies online. Here's a, a nice little holder for your needle. Uh, for a long time I did needle felting with just the needle, holding the needle in, in my hand like this. Uh, and then I discovered Clover makes this nice little uh, needle holder and it holds anywhere from one to three needles. You can use it in a way that uh, makes your needles kind of short for little detail work or you can take off this little guard and have your needles longer and you can insert uh, anywhere from one to three, I have two in this one, but it will hold three needles. So this is made by Clover, so you need to have your needles. You need to have a pad that you can poke that needle into. I buy these at, the, at my local fabric store, Joanne Fabrics has them, or your local store. I like to buy this uh, two inch thickness and cut it into, uh, I don't know, about eight or nine inch squares, however big you, you like to work on. Um, a lot of times you can buy uh, chair pillows and cut them into pieces that will work for you. That's your second thing that you need. And then the third thing you need is wool. Uh, the wool that we get like this is called wool roving and you can buy this online. All you have to do is search wool roving or needle felting and uh, you can find also if you search weaving uh, various different textile crafts you'll find places where you can buy wool that's been cleaned. This wool has been cleaned and carded. Uh, this wool has been cleaned and carded and dyed. So you can buy wool in many many different colors as well. The trick to doing the needle felting is you put your, I'm going to show you first of all how you can do really simple flat felting. This is what I call flat felting where this would eventually become a pillow top or maybe, uh, maybe I would use it to cover a lid on a box or something like that. But it's just felted. And this is what I call color book felting where you trace your pattern onto your fabric. Um, you take a little piece of wool. I never cut my wool roving. I always pull it apart. You take your little piece of wool roving and you munch it all up and just fold it and scrunch it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You just munch it all up and lay it in the shape that you have traced on your backing. You take your needle and you start poking that in, just, just like that. The wool has little microscopic barbs. Each little piece of wool has a barb on it. And as you poke the needle into it, it forces those fibers to grab a hold of each other. So then they begin to stick together. 
The needle also has, and you want to be very, very careful of your needles because it's extremely sharp, uh, it also has little barbs. If you run your fingers backwards, you can feel little barbs. So as you poke the needle in there, those little barbs grab a hold of the wool, pull it into itself, and then it starts to stick together. Now, if you're doing something flat like this, you want to make sure that every once in a while you, you release it from your foam so that you don't have everything sticking to your foam. So that's all there is to it. You just keep pushing this together and what I do is I pull my edge over until I find my little pattern line and then I poke that needle in until that wool starts to make a bond with the fabric in the shape that I want. Now sometimes you can push your wool over and push it in. One thing you've got to be very careful of, the needles are very brittle so if you poke your needle in and then try to move it you're going to break your needle. And they're not they're not super cheap. I mean, one will last you quite a while if you're careful with it. But if you push it in and then try to move it, you're going to break it. They're very brittle. Okay, now so you can see how quickly you can take that little piece of wool and have it become a shape. This is a little strawberry on this design. And so I would want to make this kind of strawberry shaped. Although it is folk art, so it's not it's not a real critical shape. But you can see how you just lift that up, poke the edges in, find out where your pattern line is, and pull that wool over till you can poke it into right along the edge of your pattern line. You can see how that now is starting to take shape. Once I have it adhered to the backing, and again, make sure you're lifting that off every once in a while to make sure it's not sticking to your backing, then you can poke this as much as you want. You can make your needle felting as tight as you want it or as, as loose as you want it. This, is, this heart here is a heart that I'm not finished with yet. It's still very soft and fluffy. This heart is one that I'm finished with. It's very firm. It doesn't really smash in. And you can poke your needle into these until they're as firm as you want them to be. If you discover that you did not lay down enough wool and as you're poking this, it begins to shrink smaller and smaller and smaller <clears throat> and is not going to turn out to be the size you want it to be, then all you have to do is pick up a, another little piece of wool and take that, lay it right on top of or alongside wherever you need it, lay it down there, hold it down, and begin to poke it together. And that will increase the size. The one thing you've got to be very careful of is to keep your fingers out of the way because when you poke yourself it's not that much fun. Um, you can hold your foam pad on your lap or on a table but when you're doing this flat type of felting, you want to make sure that you've always got your foam pad under there so that you're not uh, poking into a hard surface, breaking your needle, or poking into your knee and drawing blood. So that's all you do to make something that's flat felted. You just keep laying little pieces of wool into these little shapes and you poke that needle in until it becomes the shape you want it to be. You can manipulate that with your fingers. If you want this strawberry to be a little bit indented right here, then push that in with your fingers. What I like to say is that you have to identify with your fingers what the shape that you want to create. And then poke it to make it stay. So you could take your finger, press that little indentation in, poke it and poke it and poke it, until it stays. Now you've got a little indent there. And the other thing is, if you wanted to make your tip of your strawberry a little more pointed, just take your fingers, pull your wool into the shape that you want, and then poke it to make it stay. So now your strawberry is going to be a little bit of a heart shape. And you would just poke and poke and poke with this needle until everything is as tight as you want it and shaped up the way you want it to be. Now to make something that's more dimensional, 
you would have to have a piece of wool. Let's say you wanted to make a heart. What I like to do is take my roving and kind of separate it like this. And so that it's not all in a big long streamer. Separate that. We'll just take part of it. And then bunch it all up. Usually you can figure out that if you take your wool and fold it and munch it up as tight as you can get it, that's about the size that your finished product is going to be, approximately. So let's say I want to make a heart about that big. So I'm going to munch my wool up about as tight as I can, and I'm going to lay it on my pad and poke it with my needle. I'm not thinking about shape just yet, because what I really want to do now is just get my wool to kind of stick together so that I can create a shape with it. I don't want it to get too tight though before I start creating my shape because if it's all stuck together in a certain shape it's harder to change to change that shape. Keep your fingers out of the way. And you just keep going and keep going until this little blob of wool begins to hold together. When you let go of it, it doesn't just fall all apart. So there, now we have this very loosely shaped ball. Now let's say I wanted to create a heart. So with my hands, I'm going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. And the first thing I usually do is just kind of look at it to see, well, what, what, how much of a shape do I already have going and what, how can I make use of what I've already got. So let's say I could just, this is a loose area here, I could take that part and poke that in to make that little indentation in the heart. Okay, so now I've got the little shoulders kind of coming up. And then I'll lay it down here and I'll think about creating more of a pointed end to it, the way hearts are. I usually try to tell people that you can do as much with your fingers as you can with your needle. So you need to kind of push and pull and stretch and smash until your object begins to take shape. You push it into the position that you want and then you poke it to make it stay there. It's as simple as this. Um, some people do use forms inside um, t so that they can create a shape that way by, by starting out with a form. I've never done that. When I first started I just my first thing was to make a heart and I just poked at it and poked at it until it became a heart and if I didn't like the shape of it I just changed it with my fingers until I liked the shape of it. And then I started going on to more advanced things like sheep and teddy bears. But that is there's no way for me to give you a pattern or anything. You just have to play with it and push it and pull it until it begins to take shape. So it's this heart has a ways to go before it would ever be finished, but it's already starting to look heart shaped. Now, if you don't want your heart to be flat on one side, then you've got to make sure that you're poking all the way around it all the time. So you've got to move it around and around and around Otherwise, you'll end up with um, a heart that is flat on one side, which if you wanted to glue it down on something, that would be okay. But if you wanted to have a completely rounded heart, this one is flat on that side, slightly flat, and then the other side is more rounded. But if I wanted to have a nice puffy heart, I'd have to make sure that I went around and around and around all the time. Don't concentrate on just one side, but make sure that you're poking the entire object all the way around. So that takes me to the idea of doing something more shapely, like a teddy bear or a bunny. Okay, so you can see now it's starting to look like a heart. If I wanted to do something a little more difficult, like a, a teddy bear, these teddy bears that I make are not articulated. So in other words, 
the, ha the arms and the legs don't move around. They're firmly fixed and they are an integral part of the body. So they're not, they're not jointed or articulated at all. Neither is the head. These teddy bears start out as one piece of wool. And it's possible you can make the body and the limbs and attach them, but I just, this is the way I like to make them. You have to start with the idea of what a teddy bear looks like. So if you had a piece of wool, and I usually try to calm it down a little bit. In other words, tuck all those little ends in so that you don't have just this wild piece of wool in front of you. And you can imagine, you know what, the shape, what a teddy bear owns, what it has. It has a head, it has two arms, and it has two legs. So maybe we would decide, okay, we'll make two legs here. So I'm going to split my wool apart right here, and now my teddy bear has two legs. Do you see what I did? I took my wool and I just grabbed it and worked it in my hands so that it kind of started sticking together. Then I'm going to take my two arms. So I'm going to pull away a little bit of arms. And again, I'm going to get them in my hands so that I have these two arms sticking out. And then I have a head. Now in this case, I've got just this, I don't have a very big piece of wool, so I don't have quite enough to actually make a teddy bear, but I just wanted to show you what I do. In this case, I would probably add a little bit of wool to the head because it turns out that I don't have enough for the head. So now I've got a head, I've got two arms, and I've got two legs. So what I would do is I would just start to make them stay in that shape. Remember, I I make the shape with my hands and then I make them stay that way by poking them. So here I go. I'm going to take this wool. You have to release it from the foam quite frequently so that he doesn't become part of the foam. And I'm going to just poke until those legs start to stay the shape of legs. Now I don't do uh, the feet yet. I always make sure that my legs are long enough so that I can fold them and create the feet at the end. Not, not at the end of the project, but at the end of the legs. So there's my arm starting to stick together. And here's the other arm. And here's the head. Now you notice that most of my poking is done from the side and not from the top because I don't want to create a flat Stanley here I want to create a dimensional teddy bear so I'll do some poking at the top but most of the poking is done on the sides okay so now I've got this funny looking little Sasquatch guy I'm gonna lift him off of the foam and turn him over and start poking on the other side so once I get him to where he's hanging together then I'm gonna keep working him with my hands I'm going to keep trying to make the shape that I want. At some point I'm going to stretch his arms up to make sure they're the same length. I'll stretch his feet together, stretch them up the way I want them to make sure they're going to be at the same length. And then once I have them pretty firmly packed, then I'm going to take the feet, I'm going to fold them up like this and do some little bit of poking to make them stay. So now you can see that the feet are going to stay like that. Once I have the feet folded up, then I'm going to fold the legs up. Again, I'm going to fold it and poke it the way I want it to be. And eventually, those legs are going to stay like that. The same with the arms. I'm going to fold them inward, poke until they start staying. And then I'm just going to keep going and keep going poking all around until he gets very tight and very compact. And that is the only, that's, that's it. That's all you do to do needle felting. You can do simple things, which obviously you would, you would want to start out with some simple things. A simple little snowman would be fun to do. You can see how easily that would be done. The, the little flowers are very easy to do. 
that little alarm means my time is up. So I hope that you will be able to uh, get yourself some wool, get yourself some little needles, and this is it. This, these are the three things you need in order to do needle felting. Easy to take with you, easy to sit on the couch in front of the TV, and keep your hands busy while you watch your favorite TV programs. I hope you'll give it a try. Have fun!